Welcome, welcome, welcome to Jerry's Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Frida, didn't want to forget you. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean. We are on episode JL111, so that's JL111. If you're playing along at home and want to see any of the items that we're going to be using today, you'll go to the jerrysartorama.com website. You'll type in that keyword, JL111, and that will bring up the entire list of all the supplies that we're using today. Today we're doing a palette knife painting demo. We did an episode earlier this spring with palette knives and talked about them and a lot of the different kits you can get that have multiple knives in it. Uh, some of the, just the single knives, some of the knives that have kind of cool little teeth that are great for doing all sorts of really neat finishes. Um, but everybody said, hey, besides just like looking at them, that was kind of fun. How, how do you apply them? So we're going to talk today about just kind of trying them out, trying to kind of build a painting with the knives. Um, so that's what we're going to start here in a few minutes. Uh, quick overview of the products that we are using. Let's see, you know what? I gave you guys all the list, just not me. Or got put here. under something. So, okay. I just want one, so I've got... Ooh. Don't, don't go skating off anywhere there in your chair. Thank you, Katie. All right, so we are gonna be using Charvin acrylics today. We're going to be using the Jerry's Studio Acrylic line. We've got a gloss gel, which what that is is the same body as a regular heavy bodied acrylic. We've got the heavy gloss medium. And then we also, it's, it's a big whopping jar of modeling paste. So we'll be using that as well. Um, that is going to be the thickest. You'll see that. That's also um, a white color already out of the tube or the, the jar. So we'll see that when we get into it. We are going to be featuring the um, Creative Mark FX Effects Studio palette knives. They have all sorts of cool little kind of shapes and sizes and little toothy things to make any mark that you can think of. Um, there were some that I was like, when I was working on this stuff over the weekend, I was like, I don't even know what I would ever use that for. Guess what? Found a use. So, so we will be kind of picking and choosing some of those as we go along. Um, just the regular Creative Mark um, Studio Palette Knives set of eight that somehow dwindled now to six, but we've got the mainstay from those. Um, and then we also have the giant XL ones. I've got them hanging back here and we'll grab them as we need them. There's six. Another one of those has, is, is around here somewhere. So we'll be using all those with this. Um, and the, the XL ones, those are the ones that are not the nice cooking spatula size. Covers a lot of area. I'll leave that there because I'm going to use that. So the Charmin paints, uh, we're using the edge, uh, one and a half inch deep canvases. These are 24 by 36, just because we thought it'd be a little bit easier for you to see on the camera, um, especially to see strokes and kind of how much area you can cover with specific knives. Uh, Artist black masking tape. This comes in handy for blocking stuff out if your painting is completely dry, like you wanna let it dry overnight before you start putting this on so that you don't pull up paint. Um, it'll leave a nice clean line, kind of like painter's tape will, very easy to still pull off. So uh, if you accidentally paint over it a little bit, it'll come right up with the tape. You just want to remove it while it's still wet. And then we're also using um, just a Soho disposable palette pad, the, the gray toned one, not any reason for that, just that was the size we had. So it's gray toned. All right. No one needs their list back, do they? Okay. All right. So I'm going to throw that under there. All right. So uh, let, let's get started with this. So we're doing a, a picture of my bird. I've inherited a bird from a friend that passed away. Um, we have a really nice viewer named Ruth from Michigan who's helped me just anything I needed to know about birds. She has been there and helped me out with it. So we're doing a picture of April because I thought the feathers would be really cool to be able to show how the knives can be used to make feather-like shapes. So 
uh, let's see, we are going to go with a deep ultramarine. Okay, don't, don't watch. I might need to use my teeth for this. What? I don't like it. I, well. I was using tubes at home, not this one. Do as you say, not do as you do? Uh-huh, yeah. No pliers. Give it to me. Oh, Ooh. Lord. Ta-da! Yeah. I don't like the tubes. All right, so we're getting that open. We'll get some of the gel medium out while we're doing it. Now they're fighting over who gets to open the tube. Frida did, yay. Thank you, Frida. All right. She won't let me use my teeth. Oh, so you were going to do it too. I just see I don't if, the cam I can't. if the camera wasn't on me, I would have <laughs> done it. We want to keep the tooth. Mm. Never, never lost a tooth yet. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. That's a lot of blue. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so the, their palette knives use a lot of paint. This is a big canvas, Katie. Sure, that is true. Big canvas. And we're going to use medium. So people ask, why don't you just use the paint? Well, that's a great question. If this was an eight by 10, I wouldn't bother using the gel medium because I would just use the acrylic paint. But we've got a 24 by 36. And everybody always complains about how we seem like we're wasting paint, right? Okay, number one, we can get lots of paint. We, we know a guy. <laughs> His name is Jerry. But we've got this gel medium so this is going to be the same body as that paint right but it's going to be able to help extend it now if this wasn't a professional quality acrylic would i put that much gel medium with it no why would that be okay not a rhetorical question but i'll answer it since they're busy being moderators because the pigment load on a student grade paint is going to be much much lower than a professional grade paint right so what happens if we use a student grade paint and we add a whole bunch of that what's it going to become like watercolor right mm -hmm. transparent. super transparent you already have something that because i've put a yellow ground on this i did that so we could scratch back and have some color peek through if we wanted right uh because the bird is what's called a sulfur crested cockatoo so that means they've got that yellow up kind of under their feathers and in their little kind of funny little kind of like hat feather looks like. Um, so I wanted some color to peek through and to eventually kind of add that yellow back in. So, all right. Now I really like this spatula because it's big and flat and you can kind of squish it and flatten it around. But it did note <laughs> You like that squish? No, it just it's a technical looks like I could flip a hamburger with it. You would not want to eat it after, but it would work <laughs> with the blue, okay? Now, we're using a lighter blue than I used at home because I have an, uh, an indie blue that I really like that I put on those, but it was really dark and hard to see uh, once we got it in here with the camera. So for this one, we're using this beautiful uh, ultramarine. Do you use a specific ratio of medium to paint, or do you eyeball it? You could use whatever you wanted with this uh, for a ratio to paint. They asked about a ratio of paint to the medium. I did half and half because that should still kind of give enough coverage. There will be some spots that will show through more. Um, if this was student grade, though, I w if I used any at all, it would be much, much lower. Like maybe 20%, and I would still be have some concerns that it might show through potentially, Frida. Hope that answers the question. Now I'm just kinda patting this on. See, everybody might've been worried, but look, there's really not that much paint that's left there. Now, people might be thinking, that's kind of the same boring squish. You can put it on, as long as this isn't drying, you're not like working outside in Arizona, you can put this on and then come back in and use any of those other tools that you want around it. Now, since I said this painting would be done completely in tools, which then I immediately regretted because I was like, I'm not sure how later I'm gonna get the eyes and stuff 
of the bird. Um, I had to get creative with how to get the paint up to the edge of April. So um, that is where I grabbed one of these handy dandy little, this little thing that I was like, I don't even know what I would ever use this for, works perfect. You can just, with, can you see this with the overhead? How you can really direct this right up. Now I can go back and fix that texture in a few minutes, but you can see that helps me draw a really nice tight little line and I kind of like the little texture marks that come out from it and it scrapes up really easy off that palette paper so I can very easily come around here it's almost like using a drawing tool just a little right there, a little more than I wanted it to in the corners. And that's just one of the little decorative kind of painting knives there from that set of, I can't remember, is it is it 12? It's something pretty high. It must be 12 or maybe it's 10 I can see a number nine so but I mean it's easy enough to use where I don't have to turn this around it's pretty easy to control Do we have any questions while I'm just kind of going along? Um, this is a good question. BP asks, when talking about the paint showing through, would you be able to notice it immediately or would it be more obvious when it's dry? If you're using, okay, so if you're using the medium, she's asking about um, how soon would you notice that it's, maybe more transparent, right? If you've got an undercolor like this, you're gonna notice it right away. See how you can see around the bird as I'm going along, you can see the yellow, right? Yeah, you can see that on the, even, mm -hmm. even without it being close up. So you can see that that's coming through. Obviously, I could play with that. I could really make some marks, you know, see how I can scratch back through and see that yellow. But if you, let's say, um, have put, if you put a lot of that uh, gel medium in it, it can make it look kind of white because the gel medium is white until it dries. It might be harder to tell because it may make your paint look lighter initially. So then you may see that through. So the best thing that you could do is kind of maybe play with it a little bit first, kind of especially if you're working in a really large format where you know you're gonna need a lot of paint. Play with the proportions on a really small scale first and do some tests over some color and see is this, you know, cause one color over another, colors, some colors are more transparent, some colors are more opaque just by nature of the pigments, right? So one color over another may be very opaque, but one, and you know, a transparent color over an opaque color may not be at all. You may have to, you know, dial it back on actually using that gel medium. So always good to test first before you mix a whole bunch of paint to waste and then find out that it did not give you the actual um, effect that you were looking for. Another thing that I was thinking when I was working on this this weekend is if I was gonna really get into palette knife painting, I would take all of these knives that I'm gonna use 
I would make a sheet for each on some like just paper pulp watercolor paper and I would go with uh, get like a jar or two of the Soho acrylic because it's inexpensive and it's a jar and I would make marks with the tools on all of those sheets right on the sheet which you know which tool it is that I'm using and then I would put them up around my easel so as I was working I would know there's a specific look that I want which one of these knives is going to achieve that I don't have to actually play on the canvas while I'm working right Swatching. I will already know. Yes, you're 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 doing tool swatching, right? Just like you just like you might do for like if you're a watercolorist and you have all sorts of different types of brushes from riggers to you know big wash brushes, you may want to test that ahead of time. Yes, Amanda. So would you consider gel medium as an extender to paint for the most part? Gel me mediums are extenders. Mediums are tools that you are using. Uh, she asked if if a gel medium is an extender. Mm -hmm. Mediums are tools that you use to do a number of things. One, change the texture of the paint. Okay, if I've got a heavy body but I want it heavier, I'm going to add something like paste. If I um, have a heavy body but I want it thinner, I'm going to add just a gloss medium, right, because that's thin, it's more like water, to thin that down. So. In one way, the medium actually is, uh, you know, a a thickness variable, right? Variator, I guess, if you will, which is not a real word, but we're going to pretend it is <laughs> for today. Then the other thing that it is, is it's going to change that color. You know, it's going to make it potentially more transparent the more you add. Um, but with most, like, opaque paints, it's just going to extend it. It's going to give you more volume of paint and make your tube of paint go further because you're basically putting in a colorless extender for it, right? Now with this, I kind of like the little funny little marks. So I'm going to kind of bring this back into it a little bit, but I'm going to keep some of them because I kind of like that little scribble scrabble around her head like that. All right. Don't like it here as much. So I'm going to just pull that along there. But you can see how this, you know, gives you, and we've almost used all the paint, so we've gotten a pretty good extension. And it's thicker, you could make this thinner. You don't have to make it as thick as this, but that's part of why you would be using a palette knife. If you want your painting to be thin and you don't want to waste a lot of paint, this might not be your bag. It's not that it's wasting it, you're building texture, but if you're, you know, you're worried about being really economical with your paints and stuff like that, palette knives are probably not the way to go if you've got a very limited paint cost budget. Amanda. Do you think that knives are better for larger scales or do you think that obviously maybe not the hamburger flipper, but you could use them for smaller scales as well? You can use them for smaller scales because the knives go down to, teeny, teeny. Mm -hmm. you know, you got the the flipper and then which is in that XL set and then you've got a nice small little knife right so obviously this could move you know if you want an 8x10 a solid color real fast ta-da here you go if you want to finesse some little areas and paint smaller on a landscape or something like that these smaller knives and there's even smaller ones than this there's I mean you can get some little tiny you know detail with something like this so does the gel medium extend the drying time at all? No, it's not. It's, it's, remember, it's just pigmentless paint, okay? The gel medium is pigmentless paint that helps extend your paint out for that, for what we're using. It's going to dry the same speed. I mean, it, okay, so it's a different brand. It's the Jerry's brand versus the Charvin. There may be a slight difference in the brand, but it's not going to give you like an extra 10 minutes or 15 minutes probably. It's so gonna... to that end, would you be able to use a retarder to extend it with the gel medium or would you not recommend that? You could, but the problem is that even though this might be dry to the touch tomorrow, if it's really humid, it might be dry to the touch in an hour. If it's dry, you put that retarder in and suddenly you're playing with fire. 
what if it's super humid, you've used a retarder, and then, and you're painting thick like this, the bottom under your layer might not be dry for three months, okay? You just, you don't know. A retarder, retarder isn't what you want to be. That's what you want to do if you're glazing and things like that. That's not gonna be, this is an immediate, you know, very immediate painting technique. It's not something that, you know, you're gonna be layering beautiful glazed portraits or something like that with. So, uh, two very, very different things, okay? All right, so. We got the blue on there. See how fast that covered? It's pretty quick. I tried on the first one that I did to actually use this spatula around the whole thing and uh -oh. it took for forever. So that was when we jumped gears and switched to the little weird goofy tool that seemed useless and then was very invaluable. All right, so we got that on there. Now the perch. So, the perch for the birds actually like a pinky lilac color. We call it the princess perch because she is a princess. So, we're going to make it pretty much the color that it is. Now, for this one, I used paste because I wanted it to be matte like the one it is. And then I'm going to eventually build up the texture on it. So, we're going to take some of our paste, which paste is white. Okay, paste is thicker. So, it's got some kind of solids in it, right? So since this is white, it's going to dry white, it's going to actually tint your color, which is fine because we're going to use a color that that's perfect for, okay? Would you ever just use the modeling paste or gel medium straight onto the substrate and then paint over it? Yes. Okay. So the best thing, if, if you really, 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 really want to save paint, like really, you'll want to save some paint. Paint this on first, paint on your texture, then go back and actually paint the paint on itself. Okay. Cause it's just colorless. You can make all the texture and things like that you want. And then go back in and then with retarder, if you want to blend and glaze, right? Then you could actually incorporate that where you can make it so that it takes less time, or I mean more time, and you can actually, you know, mix and blend on the thing without the fear of it never, ever drying, ever, ever, ever. Does that answer the question pretty well, Frida? Yes, thank you. And I'll show you um, in a minute what um, what would be uh, where I've actually done that with a painting, um, and I did it with the paste itself. Which you can see the paste is thinner now. See how that's thinner than it was coming out of the tube because I've added this heavy body acrylic, which is a thinner consistency than the paste itself. So although it will keep nice peaks and stuff it's much softer than it was out of the tube. But notice, I don't know if everybody saw the color that came out of the tube. I'm gonna put it right up here. No, somebody was just asking what it was. Okay, can you guys see that? Oh yeah. That's what I mixed with it. See how that paste has that white in it? What is it? From the solids and really lightens it. It's a quinacridone magenta. So that suddenly makes it a nice bright pink, doesn't it? All right, so now with this, we're just worried about coverage for right now. Just to cover up this yellow, I'm just playing with a, I don't know, a T23, which is from that set. The quicker I get this on here, the quicker I can then go back and kind of move it around. Now this is where, since again, this is acrylic and acrylic dries, at a reasonable pace, you might want to start with a bigger knife and then get the smaller knives kind of around that detail, right? Just so you're not sitting here and, you know, 20 minutes later you go to smooth this out and it's gotten tacky because what that'll do is change the texture of the paint very quickly into like a big clumpy gross mess. Or even pick up some of the paint skin so you don't want that to happen. 
I'm going to come back with a small tool and smooth this in a minute. It's a little like cement work. I was actually going to say you might actually want all that texture on the cement perch. Oh, is it cement? Um, it is not cement. I can't remember what it is. It's got a weird little texture on when it. When we had our cockatiel, we had one of those pink perches, and it was cement, but it was like gritty on the outside. Yes, yeah. they do make cement ones. She's got another one that's actually the same blue as this, but it's it's um got like two holders so that it won't be quite as heavy. This is like um I'm not even sure it might even be like a fiberglass or something with a texture kind of built on it. Is that knife from the um, large set or from the? No, it's from this is the largest, the, the largest one from the regular set. Could you apply the color first with like a brush thickly and then go with the knife to texture it if you wanted to? Um, you could, but then you're also yeah, but okay. So this is a good a good kind of learning question. Yes, that will work. However you need to then suddenly go wash that brush because you've got a whole bunch of texture in it, right? Mm -hmm. So you're letting a bunch of paint sit while you clean because if you wait, that's going to start drying in that brush very quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's just easier to practice with the knife and get used to using it. You know, obviously, I mean, the yellow that I did underneath was applied with a brush because I wanted it to be even. Um, but you could, you know... you get used to it. This is the second time I've ever used palette knives for anything. I don't even use palette knives for mixing. I hate it because to me, it, I feel very out of control. So if I can manage this well enough the second time, you guys can practice and it won't take you that long at all. It'll be easy. I imagine making your texture chart for each knife would also help yes. with that. Way, yes. Which I did not do. <laughs> because I did not have time or space to put all of that in. It's also so. probably really good if you're kind of having artist block or stuff just to switch it up. And oh yeah, we've said, you know, very good. We've said before that this might be the time to do color charts or mm -hmm. something like that when you, you don't know what subject you want to do or you're just, you know, you want to work in there but don't have any ideas and you don't want to get out of big canvas and feel like you might be wasting it if you don't have a lot of them. Everybody's got scrap paper or cheap pads laying around. Everybody, even even me, how I'm weird about everything being cotton. Not everything in my place is cotton so that I can do that kind of stuff and not feel like, oh my gosh, I just wasted this. Amanda. Any problems with using those with oils? No, a palette knives are equal opportunity paint. They don't discriminate. Except for watercolor. Uh, no. I actually, okay, so we did that palette knife episode the last time, uh -huh. and I did a workshop down in Elizabeth City on a Saturday, and a lady who watches us that lives in Washington State mm -hmm. had come to visit relatives and found out that I was doing a workshop and came, how about she did watch that palette knife episode and did it with watercolors because she cool. said well, that, That's fun. that should work and sure enough it did so she brought examples to show me and that like made me really happy I would be it's like this is what people should do oh no she just took some scrap paper so she didn't you know yeah and just you know used tube watercolors and went to town man she was awesome how fun yeah all right so i took took that I'm going to take this because it's very easy for me to smooth this out, this little round one. This is my favorite knife that they make. Itty bitty little one. It's a little pancake one. I'm just wanting to smooth it out. I'm going to go back. Oh. Yes. Nickel size pancakes. I'm going to go back and actually... Um, texturize this with the really thin blade later. I just wanted a color on there because I wanted it not to be yellow. I know I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna get paint on me at some point today. It's okay, you're wearing an apron this time. Yeah. Which one? 
which means it'll and be I will, on her shoulders. <laughs> that's fine. I wore an old dress. It's getting too big. I figured that would be the way to retire it to the studio. All right. So, here we go with that. I'm going to move this away. You'll see how much darker the blue is. Okay, so that blue will not, sorry, that blue will not be as bright. The pink will stay that color, right? Because there's white in that paste. That blue will not be that bright because that gel medium is going to take some of the lightness out of it as the white turns clear. All right. So, dry. You can see where this was the first one I did. This is more matte here and then it's got some shine in these areas, right? This was where I tried, I was like, oh, that used a lot of paint. Let's put some gloss medium in. My mistakes are your wealthy, valuable assets. <laughs> because I didn't think about that. So I used literally two thirds of a great big tube of, of paint. I had this Liquitex indie blue that I love and now it's, and it looks black on the yellow instead of like a dark Prussian. So um, yes, so that was why I very much emphasized that because the tube went bye-bye. Because I had to do it on three of them. All right. So then the next thing, you can do really cool stuff. Like this is just one layer, right? And unfortunately in North Carolina, we have this thing called humidity. And for some reason it had been really dry and wonderful. And yes, it was really toasty, but it was still dry and not humid. And then the rains came and then this project reared its ugly head. And then guess what happened? This took forever to dry this weekend. So. We do not have the 10 coats of paint for texture that I really wanted to show people. Um, we're gonna see if we can't take the last one of these that we've got and kind of finish it out with some timed, um, some timed filming just kind of to, to see. But it's, it's really been so bad. It's been taking hours and hours for this to dry in my studio, which my studio, I will say, is pretty humid, so. Because I live in a house from the 1800s. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this painter's tape, I'm really pressing it down, okay? Just like you do if you're trimming something out at the house when you are painting your trim, kind of making a little bit of a shape with it. I'm not worried about the edge further back, but I am worried about the edge right where I'm going to work on this. You could make endless shapes. You could use, um, you know, you wouldn't have to do tape, but you could use knives and build and build and build. There's all sorts of cool things you can do. I'm trying to see what I did with this over here. So I, how are we doing on time, Katie? You know what? I'm just gonna do this one side because I don't want to yeah, we're gonna run us out to run out of time. time. So yes. All right. So I've got this here, and uh, you know I thought, okay, so this is a primary, right? We've got our uh, blue, we've got our yellow, we've got our red. So, and then eventually, you know, the bird will be white and then some of the background will be lighter. So, I decided I was going to layer some colors. We'll have this dark over the yellow, then we'll have some red, and then we'll maybe have some white, and then we'll maybe um, go back over it with light blue, build up some texture. So, we're going to show adding the red now. Now, I'm going to put a heavy gel gloss with this. Okay. Now, this red is kind of semi-transparent, so I'm not going to want to put a whole ton of this in knowing that. It's going to make it thicker, so it's not just the regular gloss gel medium, it's the heavy gel. So it's going to be a thicker texture, right, than my paint. 
but I don't want you to be able to see the blue through as much. So I'm going to mix this really, really well so we don't have patches of kind of clear haziness. See that lightened it just slightly. Do we need to show some from the tube to show the, the color difference with the white? Let's do that. Yeah. Just so people can tell. Okay, slightly, slightly more saturated. It looks a little more pinky. Okay, that to that. So add that in. Now, you might say this looks really thin right now. Remember that acrylic is thixotropic. What does that mean? It's not just a big fancy word. It means that when you move it around, okay, it's got motion, it thins out, it becomes more liquid-like. When it stops, it will very quickly go back to texture, okay? All right, so with this, we're just gonna plop this down. Would I think you scared you. Me a little. You did. <laughs> Why? I've got it taped off. You just can't see it. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> we can actually see the tape really well on the screen. Okay. Good. Oh yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Not on your screen. On our screen. So at the risk of repeating yourself, can you repeat yourself and talk <laughs> about the three different tubs and what they do? Of the Jerry's okay medium. so with the mediums everybody makes a medium right different manufacturers I just picked the basic ones that every brand makes we've got a gel medium gel medium is just the exact same texture as your heavy body paint okay so putting that with it is just making that a colorless extender all right you're you're extending the paint volume right by adding that to it, but you're also making it more transparent the more you add. The heavy gloss gel is a thicker texture, so you're actually thickening your um, acrylic, and that will that will thin it some. So, but you're you know you're you're thickening it, so it's not like you need as much, maybe, because it's getting pretty thick then the modeling paste is an actual white paste that's got solids in it so probably uh, silica gel or silica particles and stuff like that um, that is actually giving it a very thick more paste like body to it that will tint it because it is white okay can't see through those little silica things so when you add that you need to know that that's going to lighten it just like when when we did this okay for the perch so again as frida had said you know could you paint that on first to get the texture and then go back and color it to save uh, money on the paint yes and that would actually be highly recommended okay and then that's when you can use your retarder if you need. okay i shouldn't wipe this on because it will go through <laughs> I almost did it, Katie. I know, I saw it. Okay, so we've got this on. It's still nice and wet. So I am going to texture this because to do multiple layers, I'd like to be able to wipe back with some layers. So let's find the one that I used that was kind of fun. It's one of these. We'll just use this one. So I'm just going to take this and do almost cross hatching. That's my bird. You know what April would say to that? April loves you. <laughs> Can you talk about color shift in drying acrylic? Um, I, I can. Not what we're talking about. We've we've I will say if you're curious about color shift, we've done episodes on that. Um, look at any of our acrylics episodes. Generally, color shift comes when you're using, not always, but lower quality, more student grade paints, okay? If, if a brand is one price fits all for the tube, you know the color shift is going to be greater on that brand nine times out of ten 
than if it's a brand that has series of colors, right? Where they've got like one through six or seven where more expensive pigments are going to cost more. Um, that's the, the best way to tell without actually using the paint. All right. Um, and most of the time when that color shift happens, it's because of that gel. Just like when we added that gel, you're going to see in a minute that with this color, how it's very vibrant, one that's almost dry, you're going to be able to see through parts of it. Okay, because that gel was white and it made it look lighter, more pinkish, and now it's reverting darker to red, but you can actually see through those parts because the gel that's in it, the body that's in that paint is more whitish. Yes, Amanda. Do you think that you talk about that in the 15 acrylic mistakes video? I don't remember. We've, we've <laughs> done 111 long? episodes, people. I don't remember. You could watch it and see. Okay, so look, pulling this up while it's still wet. Why? Because acrylic is a plastic polymer and it will tear otherwise. So I'm gonna pull this up while it's still nice and juicy and see how I was able to get a nice hard line with the tape. I could have done that even if I wanted to go around the bird and then just really glob it on, but I was not that patient. All right, so here we go. All right, so now if I wanted even more lines, I could scratch this down beyond that. Take one of these and really scratch more because I know there's some yellow in some spots. See, there's some yellow. I could scratch back down to that. You could do whatever you wanted for this, okay? And layer as many layers as you want. That's kind of a fun texture. Okay, let's, let's stop that. Let's go to the next. Starting you to get would excited not use those fun. mediums with watercolor. These are acrylic mediums, not watercolor mediums. To use watercolor mediums, you add watercolor, because the pigments are different. They're they're supposed to be kind of <coughs> held in this jewel-like form with the transparencies, with the gum arabic and stuff. It's not going to work with your acrylics. It also will not work with oils or water mixable oils. No. No, stick, your mediums are friends, they hold hands, they bond together, stick to them. Okay, all right. They're clicky. They are. Dang mediums. All right. It's like high school all over. It is. All right. So, we're going to, we'll show this real quick, yes. And then we're going to get the paste out. So this was the first time that I tried this. Can you see the texture? Would it help if I turn it on edge to see the texture? Turn, um, and I'm sorry that the, that the gilding is really shiny. It is copper gilding. It's so pretty. But I decided... Where, what part are you going to be talking about? Uh, just in here, on. right in here. I think this is the easiest to see here. Oh, oh perfect. perfect. Look at that. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. So if we do that, see, uh, yep. See how you can see that texture? Are those actual feathers? <laughs> Thank you for the infomercial, Frida. <laughs> However did you do it? All right, so this is that, that modeling paste that we're talking about, okay? This was put on, I scraped it off a number of times. Should I have practiced on something first? Yes. Was I at a workshop where we were trying different mediums? Yes. Had everybody else gone to bed and was it 1.30 in the morning and I maybe have had a couple glasses of wine? Maybe. Yes. So therefore, but you know what? It dried very slow. So I was able to scrape parts off and kind of go over it here and there and ended up being very pleased with this. Now this is different. This is actually um, a, a, a watercolor medium texture. Okay, so you can do a texture on something with a watercolor medium, there's uh, it's a core brand, or it's either core Daniel Smith, that makes a kind of textured ground that you can put on. You really have to let it dry ahead of time. It had to dry for more than 48 hours before I could put the watercolor over it. But And it gave some texture, but nothing like this. I mean, look at how built up this is and nice. If I tilt it more like that, see how that really looks a lot like feathers. It was so fun to do. It almost feels like when it's dry. Yes. Palmer clay. Yes. And there are some mediums that you can actually um, carve back out of. Can you sand into it? It's, I don't, 
I've never tried this one. I do know that there's other ones that are um, carvable. Um, I want to say it's a, either a we golden or a Liquitex. Did it on one of the videos? Yes, yes, one of the videos that we did all, uh, all you needed to know about acrylic mm -hmm. mediums or something like that. We did show all the mediums, and, that, and that's something that you need to know about this. There's other mediums you could be using with this. We're just playing with three very basic ones. That episode that we did on acrylic mediums has all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, let me show this side real quick, okay? So see, we've got that. It was very hard to paint back into around a drawing. This is just one of our Da Vinci wood panels. So that's got clear gesso over it. So now I've got to go back over that with other stuff. So this was the, the farthest I got for the workshop. A week's worth of work. All right. Did everybody see that? Was that easy enough for everybody to see? Mm -hmm. They kind of know where we're going with this. Okay. Ah, now I'm stuck. Working big is okay. a good idea until you realize there's limited space back there. Yes. I'm going to do this. Me? I'll just put this back here. Here. Hmm? Yeah, space. let's do that just so it doesn't, uh, nothing happens to it. That would make there's me cry after a week. Over there. A week of work. Okay. So, this is one that we did get the color on. You can see in some places, push it back up into my little spot so I know where it is. See how it's getting lighter in here? You can see more of that through there. That was with more of that gel medium. As this dries, it's going to get a little bit darker because this was so dark and black under here, okay? But you can see what I'm talking about. Those grooves I thought would be really fun to then take a palette knife go across that way, then take a rag and gently wipe across so the color would stick then in those grooves next, right? Then do another coat of something different and then do another coat. So it would end up being like an abstract painting under it, which conversely, you could do your abstract painting first, then come back in and do what I'm gonna show you in a second. The, the possibilities are endless. All right. So this would be where I wouldn't bother to paint her. We're going to take this medium, and I'm sorry for everybody watching the thing of me. I'm going to be standing down here so that they can still see the, the picture. Is so, modeling paste too heavy for canvas? No, this is canvas. Mm -hmm. This is stretch canvas. Modeling paste is, is light when it's dry. Now, they do make some uh, extra light ones, like if you're doing a gigantic, huge canvas, I'm talking like 72 by 68, or even trying to go bigger than that, you need to be really careful. A, it needs to be braced well. B, it needs to be super heavy duty cotton, or even consider going to linen, so that you don't get sagging. And C, you're not gonna wanna apply a whole ton of it, okay? They make lighter weight pastes, um, I think, isn't it Golden Katie that makes a really lightweight? Like a fluffy. It's it's like super. It's yeah. like the popcorn that they put in ceilings. It's probably yeah. got that kind of stuff in it. Um, and we did talk about in the mediums episode. This isn't where it's like okay, let's make. Our, I'll make my own medium, sand medium. That should be easy. Mm -hmm. No, there's stuff in there that keeps it so that it stays separate in the acrylic polymers. You don't want to be just making your own mediums leave the frustration factor out of it. Okay, so we're gonna work on the tail here. Now, when I did this with the other one initially, I tried to do it from going down to up. Then I realized, no, you need to do your under feathers first and then build up from there, okay? So first what I'm gonna do. Can you explain why you need to do? We're going to. I'm going to show you. It's easier for me to show you while you're doing while we're doing it than than explain it. Sorry, my throat's getting kind of scratchy. All right. So first, we're going to just cover this with the material. And why why am I doing that? And I, you know what? I need my picture. I've got a picture of her with the feathers. Can we see that? You know what, this is dry here. Kind of, it's dry there. Okay, 
Oh, we matched the color pretty well, didn't we? Okay. So I'm doing this because I know as I put this on, some of my drawing is going to disappear. And some of this is an underdrawing of a first one that I tried and like. We're going to do these feathers here for her tail, okay? In this picture, we're looking up at her. It looks very strange. That's actually the ceiling, the beadboard for the ceiling. So, all right, I'm putting this on and just getting this kind of primed first. All right, the reason for that is as we pull the tool along, it's going to drag the texture. That's how we're going to build the texture up. But I want this, so I want this not to be where this part's really dry canvas that just has a coat of paint on it, trying to drag that across that. I want this to be nice and wet, I learned. Oh, that works easier after like the fourth try. So first we're just gonna put a nice coat everywhere we want this to be. Is anybody playing the drinking game, should we say? Does that make sense? Because then they have to free to drink. It's not, just tea. Not sure it's the same effect with tea, but you know, if that makes you sleep better at night, free to go, go for it. Okay. Do you have to gesso over modeling paste after you're done? Why would you? I whatever have they. A question. Okay. I'm guessing that they think that they have to have gesso to apply the paint too. Acrylic works on acrylic. If you're wanting to do this first and then do it in oils, your oils are going to attach to this as well. The, the paste is very dry and very porous once it's completely dry. All right, so it's not gonna be a problem to put acrylic or oil over this. Don't, don't, Gesso is made to be to soak into raw canvas to then accept the paint and absorb the paint. It's made to be your initial primary layer between the canvas. It's a barrier, right? It's a barrier and it helps bond. If you take that and you paint in acrylic and then you put that much drier layer of gesso in, you're going to have problems potentially down the road with your paint delaminating if you have not done it well okay so don't don't do that don't and people buy prime canvas all the time they buy good quality prime canvas all the time which we taught that's why we did a substrate layer because i saw some posts that people were making and i was about ready to lose my marbles don't then re gesso over a quality primed surface it's ready to go don't don't a don't waste your time. That's valuable right. painting time. B you could. It's all, it was like bird poop. <laughs> you could be using that time to be working on your painting, but also it could potentially make a nightmare for what you know. For what you're doing, because so many people don't know how to gesso right and will gesso too thick, and then it can crack later and come off. Don't do it. Don't shaking a palette knife people all right it's also a good point too to make it um these are all made to play nicely with each other the acrylics yes. are made to play nicely they're made to work with paint yes whereas people using other things i've seen people mention they've used other at home diy yes things for no. to make texture and things like that it's not made to go no with the paint it's not, not have that it is not designed ability. tested with chemists scientists right. painters everything else to, and and longevity standards yeah. where they've actually tested and aged it and all that. Don't do that. Okay. All right. So this is primed, right? Looks like spackle, like I'm filling a wall. All right. So with the feathers here, the interior feather is the lowest down. Okay. Then these are the ones that come. It, it kind of staggers out. It goes layer, 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 layer. So you want to really look at if you're doing feathers or some sort of texture, what is your lowest point? That's where you start with, and then you build the texture over it so that it looks natural. Okay? So I'm getting a little bit on here. I don't need a lot because this is my lowest layer. Under here is kind of her lowest feather. So put this on here, bringing it up. Follow where... Oh, 
follow where that goes straight up all right then it goes out to the side so we're going to and it crosses over that so we're going to actually pull a little bit more texture on here ah. too much of a pull kind of flatten that out okay then the next one we've got this edge we're going to go kind of over that edge to take some of that material off and take note that they go in towards the bird okay that tail is the center and it radiates out from that so we're going to go in now up here we've got a little bit of some goop you can kind of scrape some of that because this is going to be up under the other feathers And the next one pull in you can kind of you can feel where that creaminess is you can kind of push right along there that's okay if you can see a little bit of that yellow because we're going to be painting her later okay then we got the last one all right see how much better that looks than this do I need to hold it up at kind of an angle? Will it be easier or over by the camera so people can see that? We can see it pretty good. Okay. We can see it better on ours than you can. Okay. So that's how you add the feathers. Then if you were going to go in, I'll show you the one that I've got the feathers kind of done on for the most part. If you're going to go in and add this little bit of kind of under her body, you put that on there where it's already primed, right? And you start pulling it in. Because remember, those feathers are under the body feathers. So each layer is going to be kind of covering that next layer. You get so much depth with it. Mm-hmm. All right. And then you can use some of those other larger knives as you start getting to kind of wider areas to keep going. Okay. Well, I'll put this down and I'll put the one up there. Let's, let's see if anybody's got any other questions because we're getting ready to wrap it up and then I'll take this last one and we'll do like maybe film each layer that goes on. Oh, thank you. That would be very, very much the helpful. All right. Thank you. Little aprils all over the floor. Big aprils, big aprils. Yeah, I'm curious to see what she'll think about it. She'll probably do the big April, April, April. pop art series of aprils around. Mm -hmm. All right. So this was all done very quickly before the uh, before the show. In what about 30 or 40 minutes? just to be able to kind of show you. Now, this is really thick. I don't want to build it any thicker than this for now. I probably will come back and make work on this and build it more, but um, because it's so humid here, this is already going to take a while to dry. This is probably going to take two days to dry enough to be able to kind of keep going. I can see that it's starting to mat out a little bit on the tail. Um, so that part, but that part's a lot thinner. That part's already kind of starting to I'm going to turn it so they can see the tail from that side camera, Katie. If you can hit that. There, does that make... See how you can really get that to look like feathers? And actually, now that I think about it, there's a one of those detail things. Hmm. Can I put it over here? There's one of the tools. I'll, I'll take a picture of it and put it out. Um, that I used. That I really liked the texture on the bottom of it. And I used it on just these bottom ones to get kind of those lines of the feathers. You can see it if I do that. You can see a little bit of that line. Okay. 
So I would continue to build up and smooth out some of the places. I like how this texture is. Some of this looks a little too frosting-y for me, so I would want to maybe control that and smooth it out a little bit more. Uh, but I was trying to rush so we could go ahead and have this ready so you could see kind of a full feather thing going on. Um, and I think that when we film this, I think I'm gonna try doing the feet with like piping either a piping bag or just a uh, Ziploc bag with the medium in it and then kind of squirt it on to try to make it look more like the feet because I don't know how you would do it with the... What about the flow line? Would that be... Oh, no, it's not. It's going to be too thick for for it to stay, you know, t big and textury. I think a Ziploc will work. I've used that to decorate a cake and a punch, so... I decorated a cake once, Amanda. I know that's just well, I was just thinking that mind blown. I hate using if you're gonna use a tip, you can use a ziploc, but otherwise it makes an oval and not a circle. I think I can control it enough to All right. because that's because fine. with the feet because the bird texture goes across the feet, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of reptilian, so I would use that to make the the like, like you can make it work for sure. Yeah, I think but so. I've made some ugly cupcakes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, this would not be tasty, no. Okay, so this is kind of what you can do with some of these knives. As you can see, we got a lot of texture going on. We could take this so many different places. Um, it, this is a lot all at one time to be kind of doing and then wanting it to dry and then not. It's disappointing. It would have been nice if, had I known that we were going to get so wet to have started this about two weeks before. So yeah. we could have had some nice uh dry time between but well gosh golly darn you'll just have to post the final pictures yep. to the facebook live group yes we will so and that's another really important added benefit of if you do have a facebook account and you join the facebook live group even if you just kind of lurk in the shadows and never even post you can see all the cool things everybody else is posting and you get to see finished projects with stuff. I mean, we did put the wood grain from the colored pencil thing did go online. Uh, we posted in that the group, but I think that went on YouTube too and on the Facebook, regular Jerry's Facebook page, didn't it, Katie? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. that is where we put kind of end results of things. Sometimes I will post stuff that I'm working on that's non-work related when I get a chance to do non-work related stuff. Uh, but definitely join the group, answer the question, and then we can bounce you in. So until then, you guys have a pleasant evening, and we will see you next week. Take care.